God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. And I don't say that as a saying. I do mean for God to bless you. I do mean for God, Elohim, maker of heaven and earth, to bless you. And uh, he being who he is, not only do you need it, but you need him to be the one. Yeah, I can bless you. Yes, I can. However, I said, God bless you. And bless actually means happy. And we need a lot of that today. We're living in times where people are going through stuff. And um, most of us aren't remembering the scripture about uh, what shall separate me uh, from the love of God, you know. And death, peril, no kind of tribulation. The thing of it is when we're going through the tribulation... We don't remember those things, and we should. And uh, that's part of why today I'm going to deal with huh, resolution solution. I'm going to deal with. Well, let me. I, I, starting over, I want to remind you that you are a person of excellence. And that's whether you just tuned in, whether you think by accident, no such thing, or you tuned in on purpose, whether you tuned in early, late, whether you stay for a minute or the whole time. We're going to deal with some things that have to do with our time and how we are. I want you to to consider, could it be me? Could it be me? Now, I want to let you know right off, I I, I didn't want to. I I didn't want to put you on the defense. But I'm going to let you know right off. Because of the times we're in, it'll be you if you don't do something about it. Okay? And we believers, we need to be about resolution, solution. The thing of it is, saying it that way doesn't tell us very much. So I'm going to go through 1 Samuel I'm going to I'm going to preface with intro with uh some things out of 1 Samuel chapter 29 and I need you to pray for me that I actually get through chapter 30 cuz I'm going to deal with the things that that are where we are in our times and I'm talking about the whole world yes in society no matter where I realize that uh I'm an American, and mm, I'm hugging a sweetie pie, but you can't see her. I'm, I'm, I am an American, and Western ideology, Western theology, we think a certain kind of way. And we think a certain kind of way about things and people and cultures. And we also think that we're right. I happen to think we're right. However... You don't know that anything's right till you got it from the Word of God. And even when you got it from the Word of God, if you got it from the Word of God, according to how your culture interprets, you still need a revelation of God. And then, on top of that, when God does reveal something to you, you still need a revelation of God. You still need God to reveal to you. One of the prophets, God told him the prophecy, and the prophet asked him to show, for ask God, show me the meaning of the prophecy. God told it to the prophet, gave him the prophecy, and the prophet understood some of what I'm telling you now, that God will reveal stuff to you, and you know that there needs to be more revelation on that. And some of the things God will reveal to you, you know, you know that there needs to be not only there needs to be resolution to even get to a solution. Okay, so I don't want to talk a lot because chapter 30 that I, I want to get through is long. And I'm a theologian and I, I want to stop at every phrase and every this, every that. And we can't do that with this one. So I have to make me behave. Okay. But I'm going to remind you that you're a person of excellence. You came here born, anointed, appointed, and equipped that way. Yes, you do get trained in things. 
if you want to be a good soldier, you get trained. If you want to be a good teacher, you get trained. And yes, there's such a thing as training. I'm letting you know that even with all of the training, like that little hug that I was given that little one, you saw the top of her hair if you did. Um, she was trying to get up so she could be seen. She came here born, came out of her mother's womb, a prophet, a person of excellence, anointed, appointed, and equipped for her purpose in the earth. And nowadays in psychology, the church, when we hear those kinds of phrases, we like to think, oh, that's everybody. No, it isn't. One of the things that I like to remind you, David had an army of excellence. And then the scripture talks about groups of 30. And then the scripture talks about, in, in his army, the scripture talks about groups of threes that the 30 hadn't attained to. And I always remind you, that's how the scripture says it. That's not anybody looking down on anybody. However, you do need to recognize if God put his glory on you for a purpose, you don't tell people when they see the glory of God on you, oh, just glorify God. Don't, 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 don't thank me. You know, in, in, in um, Chronicles, I'm pretty sure it's Second Chronicles, might be 14, chapter 14, it tells you that there's the glory of the sun and the glory of the moon. The sun is supposed to shine with its glory that God gave it. The moon is supposed to reflect light. The moon doesn't even have its own light. But there, the word says there's the glory of the sun, the glory of the moon. And the sun isn't saying, oh, give God the glory. Give. No, the sun is shining. So I want you to know that if you tuned in here, you are a person of excellence. And you came into the earth that way. Anointed, appointed, equipped. And I left something out. Okay. And that doesn't mean you don't need to train so that you're more excellent, and so on and so forth. I'm just letting you know for the purpose that God gave, like if you're the sun or if you're the moon, for what you're here for, you're anointed, appointed, and equipped to do it, and to do it with excellence. And everything isn't done in excellence. Now, understanding all that, and I hope you do, one other thing I'll let you know. People of excellence go through stuff that doesn't even make any kind of sense. This is one reason why uh, the scripture lets us know, right now I'm thinking of Philippians 4, that the peace of God passes understanding. Because the peace of God will be there when things make no sense. The peace of God will be there when you're looking at and you've assessed and you've got the assessment correct, but it just couldn't be that. Kind of, kind of like Mary at the at the tomb after the resurrection. And actually, I'll use that as an example of resolution solution. Because she was favored by Jesus. She was part of the the crowd that was around Jesus all the, you know often. And yet, at the tomb. Two angels, after the resurrection, two angels asked her, why are you crying? And I think I might have shared with you that right off, that's a, that's a kind of silly question. That's a kind of a stupid question. When a person is at a gravesite, crying is not unreasonable. And yet, when, when God says a thing twice, it's immutable, irrefutable. That is how it is. And the angels asked her twice. Why are you, pardon me, they didn't ask her twice. It was two angels that asked her, why are you crying? That's when we need to halt on the thing that we know so well, like that crying at a, a tomb is not an unnatural thing. To be asked, why? So when we're dealing in the thing that we're anointed, appointed, and equipped for, or the thing that is part of our society and our culture, part of our, our 
our nation and God has the host ask a question about it it's time for us to pay attention to him and not the circumstance not the situation however she's crying and Jesus asked her why are you crying she didn't know it was Jesus and she says and I'm taking too long to say it because I want to get into this long chapter 1 Samuel I want to let us know for resolution solution she says you go back and read it she says you know I'm of Jesus and and then what he answers her when when she he says her name she recognizes him and she probably went to go hug him I'm I'm just assuming cuz I'm a hugger I don't know that I'm assuming that and that's part of what I'm what we're going to deal with right now that our assumptions when we mean well Is it the right thing? And he told her, touch me not. And I don't think he told her in that tone of voice, but he told her, touch me not. I have not yet ascended to the Father. And being a theologian, there's a whole lot I want to say there, but I want to skip skip over to that. He told her to go tell the brethren. We have all kinds of teaching from a scripture or two. The most important, we have a lot of, we have teaching in different denominations of a woman not teaching. Now, you probably don't think that because you're tuned into me and I am clearly a woman. Bless God, I I thank God for that. I didn't always used to be happy about that because men treated me a certain kind of way because I was a woman. Right now, I'm glad that that's recognizable. (laughs) When she went and told the brethren, they didn't believe what she had to say. When people want to hear the prophecy, when people want to hear the word that God gave, that doesn't mean God didn't give it. And in our day and time, while we know that as a fact, we don't know that as life and living or living the word of God, being walking word. And Jesus Jesus said about it that you killed the prophets, you crucified them. And I don't mean crucified like he's crucified, but you killed them. You didn't want to hear what they had to say. And for us right now, none of us sin in order to displease God. I was going to say on purpose, but some sins are, they're on purpose. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to deal with David, and I want us to understand, could it be me? Could it be me? Army of excellence that they were. Wonderful that they were. And discreet that they were. And I'm going to show you the kind of discreet they needed to be. And you do, re- I, I hope you remember, and if not, go back and read it. But San, uh, David, King David, before he was king, running from Saul, who was king. I mean, they're all, they're, they're Hebrews, tribe of Hebrew, Israels, Israelites. But Saul wanted to kill him. Hmm. And so he runs into the enemy's camp. He runs to to the Philistines. Is that resolution? Is that solution? When I ask, could it be me? Coming up with things that just don't make sense. Us coming up with, instead of asking God. Because the situation is so tight and so dangerous... And it really is. Like Mary 
really looking and seeing that Jesus really was gone. And she automatically made an assumption that they they took him away and was not realizing that had her assumption gotten back to the political hierarchy, the soldiers would be automatically killed who were on guard because she made the report that they carried him away. Oh, I don't think she meant for anybody to be killed. However, do we know the resolution and the solution to things that we cause, problems that we cause, decisions that we make, assessments that we make because we looked at, we saw the empty tomb, we saw the stone rolled away, and so they must have taken him away. Hmm. Reasonable salute, reasonable, reasonable uh, assumption and calculation. Just totally wrong. Could it be me? I I know how to think and I know how to figure things out and I know how to assess the situation and I know what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a, a, a thing of water right here. I know what I'm looking at. And I can see some of it, all the water's not in there. So somebody had something to drink here. That's my assumption. What if that's not it at all? What if there was something that needed to be filled here or whatever? That nobody was drinking out of anything. But my assumption. Reasonable assumption. Okay. I'm taking too long to get to it. I want us to think. Could it be me? I want us us to realize. When we are assessing something. With our understanding. And our sense. And we think it's good sense. And it's not God sense. Okay, so. David ran to the Philistines. Probably not God sense. But because he was a man of God. As a matter of fact, God testifies about him in the word. He's a man after God's own heart. God helps him. He helps him. Get along there in the enemy's camp. And in those days, the enemy, oh, they're not as nice as we Westerners. They'd have killed him. They'd have cut his head off. And by the way, there are nations in the world like that right now. And we're so busy being the kind Americans. Anyway, let me get to, could it be me? Resolution. Solution. First Samuel chapter 29 verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered together all their armies at Aphek and the Israelites pitched by a fountain which is in Jezreel. And the lords of the Philistines passed on by hundreds and by thousands. But David and his men passed on in the rearward with Achish. Then said the princes to the Philistines, What do these Hebrews hear? And Achish said unto the princes, Now, a- you- said unto the princes of the Philistines, Is not this David the servant of Saul, the king of Israel, which had been, had been with me these days? Or these years? I don't think David thought of it was going to be years. And I have found no fault in in him since he fell unto me unto this day. Years. And the princes of the Philistines were wroth with him. And the princes of the Philistines said unto him, Make this fellow return, that he may go again to his place where thou hast ah I'm losing my place let me find something to hold my 
where thou hast appointed him and let him go down and let him not go down with us to battle lest the battle be an adversary to lest in the battle he be an adver, adversary to us and wherewith should he reconcile himself with his master and should it not be with the heads of these men pardon me I need to get a piece of paper here because I keep my eyes keep keep jumping around sorry to take the time and I hope I remember to pick up the pen so they realized like yeah he could he could he could turn on us in the middle of the battle <sighs> for wherewith should he reconcile himself unto his master should it not be with the heads of these men and by the way we Americans, we think of that figuratively. Right now, we have Asian nations that that's exactly what they do. Take your head off. No trial, no nothing, just sword, take your head off. Is not this David in, of whom they sang one to another in dances saying, Saul slew his thousands and David his tens of thousands. And that, by the way, is why Saul got mad. I call it a platinum record. We we of churchianity need to stop being mad at at uh, the women singing because when you read where it was where Saul said it was the women that were singing. We need to know some things about song when the masses sing what it does, and then we could bring some resolution and solution to what's happening in the music industry. Because it belongs to us, the body of Christ. It belongs to the kingdom of God. And we, like Adam, we just let it go, let it go. And then condemn those. Anyway. Then Achish called David and said unto him, Surely as the Lord liveth, and that's Yahweh in my Holmes and Names of God study Bible. When Lord is in all caps, it's, we got tricked into saying Jehovah, but it's Yahweh, Okay. That's God of covenant, the ratifier and keeper of covenant. The way Jesus said, I'll let, never leave you nor forsake you. Okay. Surely, as Yahweh liveth, thou hast been upright, and thy going out and thy coming in with me in the host is good in my sight. For I have not found evil in thee since the day of thy coming unto me unto this day. Nevertheless, the Lord's favor thee not. Wherefore now return and go in peace that thou not, that thou displease not the lords of the Philistines. So David and, and David, he, he, he did what David is intelligent, intelligent, he didn't just say okay, because what happens later is uh, somebody will think about it like he was too willing. No, David gives an argument for himself so that the, yeah. And David said unto Achish, but what have I done? And what hast thou found in thy servant so long as I have been with thee unto this day that I may not go fight? The enemies of the Lord, my uh, of the Lord, of my Lord King. People of excellence. Everybody doesn't know. David's a man of excellence. He knows. You get a person to double down on taking up for you, not you double down on taking up for you. Kind of like, and it wasn't written yet in in the in the Proverbs, but the Proverbs that we have tells us, let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thine own lips. And most of us don't even recognize that uh, a stranger means somebody who's, it doesn't mean somebody you don't know. It's somebody of another culture, of another this and of, of another that. Yeah, somebody you don't know, it can be that. Uh, and I want you to know that so that if I continue this series and point out to us about the prejudice and how Jesus dealt with strangers, the Samaritans, 
were considered strangers the way that uh, different cultures today recognize that they're put down. Hmm. Man's been dealing with this uh, prejudice. So watch this, though. We don't recognize our own. And uh, watch, I want you to see how David doubled down. An intelligent person, a person of excellence knows that when decisions are being made against you and there's someone in your favor, you have the intelligence to know how to get them to double down on taking up for you and the favor, even when you know that there's not going to be a different decision. You don't want anybody thinking twice about you when they go away. And you don't want the one who took up for you being able to be convinced you want him to keep taking up for you when the others don't believe it. If you, people of excellence, you get, you get this. And I'm showing you from the word, not from psychology today, Okay. I'm showing you from the word. It's kind of like don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. And and, and Achish answered and said to David, I know thou uh, that thou art good in my sight as an angel of God. Notwithstanding, the princes of the Philistines have said uh, that he shall not go up with us to battle. Wherefore now, rise up early in the morning. Now he had that intelligence too. You know, get up and get out of here. <laughs> with thy master's servants that art come with thee. And as soon as, as ye be up early in the morning and have light, depart. Like really early, get out. And David and his men rose up early to depart in the morning to return to the land of the Philistines. Notice that they're still not going home. And the Philistines went to Jezreel. Now, I might have to skip this, but I would like you to read the entire chapter. So, as it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had inv- had invaded the south and Ziklag and, and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And they had taken the women captives that were therein, and they they slew not any, either great or, or small, but carried them away and went on their way. I'm going to stop here and remind you that you want to look up the names because usually with the communion, the first communion in Genesis 14, I remind you that the names let you know Not only who's king of who, but the kind of king they are and how they reign. Because you have some kings who would take a sword and take your head off, no questions asked. You had other kings that it was their culture and their way that they raped the women. And any pregnant woman, they just ripped the child out of them. And if they lived, they lived. If they didn't, they didn't. I mean, cruel, cruel. And you had other kings that, oh, we're we're, going to take them and let them be our, our concubines. Okay? And when you read the names, it lets you know not only who they were and where they reigned, but it, if you look it up in Bible, not just Bible dictionaries, where you get the meanings and the understanding, not just a definition, you get to see those things, which is how Abram knew he could go rescue Lot. Because the people the, of the kings that, that took them, they weren't the kind of kings that just slaughtered people right away. Okay, here we go. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Now, mind you, he's been with the Philistines for years, and they are cruel in the way that they do things. The things that I just described that we Americans aren't that way. So we have a hard time thinking of anybody else being that way. However, uh, so he understands that they're all gone. It very well means that they're all dead. And that it, everything's burnt down. 
Mm. Then David and the people that were with them lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. People of excellence, you go through stuff that will cause you to cry and cry. Not because you're a crybaby, but because the situation is that bad. It is that awful. Even being a man after God's own heart. And even his the people with him being people of excellence and men of valor. You still go through things that just are beyond sense. And you need to understand the peace of God passes understanding. And what we're going to see here, misunderstanding. Like with Mary, she looked at it and she assessed. And what she assessed was not what was correct. These men here, they have intelligence. They're not wayward soldiers they're wavered in the sense that they're in enemy, pardon me, enemy country. But they're intelligent. Oh, I didn't turn my phone off. They are the best of the best. They are the best of the best. And for them to be weeping until that there's just no more. And I'm thank, I thank you, Lord, for letting me know that today because for the things that I've been through for the last few months, I, I was getting worn out, worn out, worn out, emotionally, mentally, physically worn out. And I mind because I'm saying it's an affront to the majesty of God and the glory of God to despair. As we always know, he's more glorious than any trial. And he's more glorious than what he revealed to us the last time. For the thing that he just did that was so glorious, he's even more glorious than that. I've learned this about him. I've learned it in the word that he never does anything the same way twice. And he always outdoes whatever it is that he did do. (laughs) Yeah. God has no problem being excellent. And the excellency of excellence. And... David's two wives were taken captives. I'm, I'm going to skip. And David was greatly distressed. But the people spoke of stoning him as if he did it. I'm, I'm, the scripture doesn't say that. I'm saying as if he did it. The scripture tells you that the people spake of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his son and for his daughters. People of excellence, you go through stuff and the people who are all on your side and walking with you and fighting with you and who are excellent with you, they can go out of their minds. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And their solution is not a solution and makes no kind of sense to kill the leader who had nothing to do with the women being gone except for that it does and we don't recognize that it does the decisions that we make we don't recognize how it affects time and society and thought and societies because the man who will go to enemy's camp ah, I'm not going to try to explain it now because it will take going into psychology and stuff and the stuff that we have taken to believe from psychology, we haven't gotten from the word. We've gotten it from 16th century and 18th century Europe and certain European countries in particular, not from the word of God. Okay, so, but they, 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 they're grieved, every man. Every man. I'll share with you right now. I learned to pray in the spirit for an hour on the basis of Jesus. He took when he, when he was uh, going to the, the garden and he took with him the three closest to him of the disciples. And he said, he never asked for prayer before. Never, ever, ever. And he said, pray, you stay here and pray. He comes back there asleep. Goes off and prays. Comes back there and sleep again. This one of the the gospels lets us know they slept for sorrow. In our day and time, we're going to give you some some um, uh, depression medicine. 
No, that doesn't do it. That doesn't do it. Our day and time is not according to the word of God. Because the scripture lets you know that a merry heart. And then when we quote that scripture, we don't even look at the context to know what causes the merry heart. And it causes it to be like medicine. And the scripture where Jesus asked them to pray, the scripture lets us know they slept for sorrow. Nowadays, we do know that when people are depressed, they they sleep a lot. And for the thing that I was going through, I recognized that I was being so worn out. And I, I, no matter what I was doing, I kept falling asleep. And I kept taking things for energy, but I kept, because things will steal your energy. And what Jesus said to them, could you not pray with me one hour? And how it tells us in Romans that when you pray in the spirit, you're praying the will of God. And so me, I, God gave it to me, but I'm saying this may be you and you can do it. And I learned to pray an hour in the spirit to pray the will of God for the life that I would lead. Now, this is decades ago. And I thought praying the will of God was going to make it so that you don't go through this kind of stuff. And what I've learned is that, yeah, you learn to go through and you learn that just the same way God is more glorious than he was before for the last thing that he, you know that he did. And he'll do the next thing even more glorious than that thing. Yeah. You grow and you expand in your capacity for faith, belief, and your capacity for test and trial. However... Tribulation works patience and patience hope. And I'm going to skip on down. Hope makes not ashamed. It's just that it doesn't feel like it when you're going through like that. You despair till you're worn out. And I'm letting you know that we, believers, people of excellence, then come to some crazy, crazy lopsided conclusions and solutions about the thing that put us in so much despair. David's wives were gone. His children were gone also. But the scripture says here, David encouraged himself in Yahweh, his Elohim. Yahweh, God of covenant, Elohim, creator. And David said unto Abathar the priest, how did he know to talk to the priest? And here again, I want to remind us, we're roy- we are royal priesthood. We need to look at these things to understand what priests do and how priests do it. And the, the priest, Amalek's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar brought the, brought the ephod to David. And David inquired at Yahweh, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue. Now when David's talking pursue, he means go get them and kill them. And mind you, if you think that they killed everything that, that you loved, you're ready to go get them and kill them. And yet God says, pursue. And as we continue, we have it now to continue with the Lord. God is not saying, pursue, go get them and kill them. God doesn't come to the conclusions that we come to. He told us, you, your thoughts are not my thoughts. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And it's not all about sinful thoughts. However, thinking from your flesh, the conclusion that you'll get, it's not necessarily sin. It's just not necessarily God. And so you, we want to ask him. And David did. And so he said, pursue. And I lost my place. Pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail, and here God says, recover all. Doesn't mean I have to kill everybody to recover all. 
Or are you saying, are you saying that there's something to recover? Like, are you just saying, are you saying? I always, I, I like that about um, the prophecy that we know, a virgin shall conceive. Um, Shennacherib, the, the king that had them uh, under siege at that time, when uh, Isaiah got this, got this message from God that a virgin shall conceive, Shennacherib was one of those kings who slaughtered people and raped the women and didn't leave anybody with child and and anyone who's uh, been with a man just kill him just kill him he was cruel like that when he took over a nation and this was known and yet God says a virgin shall conceive now we know that it's talking about Jesus the Christ being born in time however God's giving an answer gave uh, Isaiah an answer and the king of Israel an answer that lets you know that Shennacherib's not going to do the stuff that he does and, and everybody knows everybody in the world knows that's what he does God's saying mm -mm, it's not going to be like that they didn't at that time necessarily take it that it's going to be about Jesus the Christ that Mary Virgin Mary having a baby Fully God, fully man. I'm letting you know. Hear God. And God told him, you're going to recover all. And David, uh, pardon me, in nine. So David went and, and he and 600 men. When God says go, you don't have to be afraid that the men who want to kill you are going to kill you. They, they wanted to kill him. Oh, yes, they did. That can make it so that you church hoppers, that you want to go hop to another church and go somewhere else. <laughs> no, he went with the 600 men that he had that just a minute ago wanted to kill him, just a day ago wanted to kill him. And therewith, and they came to the brook Besor where those men that, that were left behind stayed. And watch this. This is the kind of thing that happens, people of excellence. In the worst of your trials, you're setting things for society, for the world, for life. That don't even have to do with the immediate situation as far as you're thinking and as far as you think you're experiencing that your sons and your daughters, your wives are taken. Okay, so there were some men left behind. But David pursued, pursued. He and 400 men and 200 abode behind. Please go read this because I'm, I'm not sure that I'm reading it correctly. Which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Besor. Now mind you, these are men of excellence. Faint is not a thing that, that happened to them, with them. And yet here it is. And they found an Egyptian, I actually want to skip through this, but they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him uh, to David and they gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water. If it was the Philistine, they'd have finished killing him and kept on going. But David was not, even though he'd been years with a Philistine, he hadn't become like a Philistine to just kill people who are not useful So they gave him a piece of cake and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, uh, his spirit came to him again. And for he hadn't eaten any bread or water for three days and three nights. And David said unto him, who are you with? Who do you belong to? And uh, who are you? And he said, I'm an Amalekite. And my master left me behind uh, uh, these three days because I got sick. Well, his master didn't kill him for being sick. He just left him, left him behind. Live or die on your own. And he made an invasion upon the south of the uh, Sherethites. I'm not sure I pronounced that right. And upon the coast of them which belong to Judah. And I want to skip down. And David said, can you bring us where they are? And he and he, the guy answered them. And he said, well, swear to me that you won't turn me in, that you won't kill me. Or put me in the hands of my master, and 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 I'll bring, I'll take you down. I'll show you exactly where they are. 
And so they made this this uh, truce. David said, okay. And uh, here again, people of excellence know what to do and how to do it, even in the worst of situations. And David, when he came down, the men were eating and uh, drinking and dancing because they had a great spoil and they had taken out the land of the Philistines and out of out the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight unto the evening. They could, mind you, how tired and worn out they were from their sorrow, from their grief. And yet, from twilight to the evening of the next day, they could fight. People of excellence, you're anointed, appointed, and equipped. And the valor stands up in you at the time that you are anointed, appointed, and equipped for. Okay, and David rescued his two wives. He recovered all that Amalek had carried away. I skipped something in the verse there. And there was nothing lacking them, neither small nor great, nor sons nor daughters, neither spoil. Remember, God said you'll recover all. When he went to the priest, when he asked before Yahweh, God of covenant, Elohim, his maker. David recovered all. And David took all the flocks and the herds and everything that they gave. And he said, this is David's spoil. Now watch this. Remember, people of excellence, you don't just get the spoil and get the victory. To, it, it, God's not done there. He's, he's not finished. Your purpose has more to do with you getting the victory in the trials that you that are so awful that you go through. You do go through tr- trials that are not normal and that the the average person couldn't get through. It takes people of excellence. And then part of the reasons is that you set the banner. You bring people up higher. Now watch this. Ah, I'm sorry, I wanted to look at the time because I'm... Yeah, I thought I was further along than that. Then David came upon the 200 men, which were were faint. Scripture mentioned them earlier, that they could not follow. And uh, whom they had made abide at the brook Beser. I'm pronouncing that wrong, Beser. And they went forward to, to meet them, and David met them with the people, and and David came near the people, and they all s- saluted him. Then answered, now watch this. Then answered all the wicked men, and men of Belial, all of those that went with David. Yeah, he had some wicked men with him, fighting with him. Oh, we, we Americans, we think everybody's got to be as good as we are to fight with us. I want you to see this. And they said, because they went not with us, we will not give them aught of the spoil that we have recovered. Save to every man his wife and his children, that they may lead them away and depart. Like they can get their own wife and their own kids and get out of here. But we're not sharing the spoil with them. (laughs) Then David, man after God's own heart. It also lets you know about the men who wanted to kill him. Then David said, David, you shall not do so, my brethren. He didn't call them my enemies. He didn't call them my wicked. The the word of God called them wicked. Let you know they're sons of Belial. But men of excellence, you don't have to call everybody just because you know who they are. You don't have to let your enemy know who he is. The stuff I'm dealing with right now. I don't let every jokester and scammer know that I know you're a scammer. You don't have to let your enemy know that you know. Be more excellent. Anyway, he said, He shall not do so, my brethren. I mean, 
We fought together. <laughs> We're brethren, huh? With that which the Lord hath given us, who hath preserved us, delivered the company that came against us in our in our hand? The Lord did this. You think you did it. He's, he's letting them know the Lord did this. For who will hearken unto you in this matter? Here again, he's getting the other people to stand with him rather than get greedy. You know, that I, I, I would like to just take a larger spoil. He's intelligent. And he knows how. He's a man of excellence. He knows how to say a thing to get the rest of the people to agree with him. Ye shall not do so. <laughs> For who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part that goeth down to the battle, so shall be his part that tarrieth by the stuff. And they shall part alike. The people that didn't go, didn't go because they're not men of valor. They really were worn out. And you, and so it was. Watch this, people of excellence. This is the effect that we have. Not just getting the victory that we're after. Not just coming through. And so, and it was so, from that day forward... That he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel unto this day. And when David came to Ziklag, he sent of spoil unto the elders of Judah, even unto his friends, saying, Behold, a present for you of the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. To them which were in Bethel, and to them which were in South Ramoth, and to them which were in Jather. And I want you to see, I, I want to go through the names, all of this with you, and he does it. I'm going to read the last verse. And to them that were in Hebron, and all the places where David himself and his men were wont to haunt. Could it be me? I want us to understand that when you're so distraught, you can think against your leaders, your God-appointed leaders. You can think a, 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 the wrong thing about the times. They didn't come. They didn't fight with us. They, they don't need to have anything. Or you can think like David, a man after God's own heart. Most of the time we want to ask God first. Even when we know the situation, we know that they didn't come with us. Those men didn't fight with us. We want to ask God, so what do you have to say about this? Whether you say Father, whether you say Jesus, Savior, whether you say Holy Spirit. And in case you don't know it, the Father will ask, answer you like a father, Jesus will answer you like either high priest or big brother or savior. The Holy Spirit will answer you like he's the one who birthed you into the kingdom of God, who birthed you into the body of Christ. And he's going to answer you according to the things that Jesus said. However, his answer is not just a repeat report. The Holy Spirit's answer is an answer that brings you up the same way he rose Jesus from the dead, the Holy Spirit brings you up with victory and triumph. Notice David here. He didn't just have a victory. He brought back everything. He, de he delivered them all. That's the way God does things when you ask him. When you ask yourself, you might have a different resolution. You might have a different solution. You want to ask God, especially person of excellence. You get things done 
and you get things done for generations to come, for times to come, even when you might not even know about times and time. One of the things that I'll, I'll just throw in there, on that, that most of us don't notice that men lived a thousand years and then they lived 500 years and then they lived 250 years. And not exactly, but you get to see the pattern. And with that, m- mankind was losing that much knowledge of things of the earth that God gave us over, lost half of our knowledge, and then lost half again, and then half again. It is crazy for us today to think that we know, because we're modern man, we know more than anything. Ask God. Ask God how to evangelize. Ask God how to fight the war. Ask God the generation we're in. And his answer? Oh, it's not going to be what you come up with, but it's going to be resolution and solution so that we don't repeat it again, the error again, the abomination again, so that we're not killing but causing law and ordinance to be set that represents God and his majesty. Amen. He is the Amen. God bless.